What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoon. And today I'm going to give you guys a brief tutorial about how to use alcohol-based markers. Personally, as an artist, I've been using alcohol-based markers for about three and a half years now, and I've created some really great artwork with them, and I look forward to using them in the future. Brands like Prismacolor, Ohuhu, Spectrum Noir, Winder & Newton, and the ever-popular Copic markers, those are all alcohol-based marker brands. As an artist who does illustrations, I use all these brands just for the colors. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I use a whole lot of different brands of markers for my illustrations. For this video, I'm going to start and talk about paper. What paper do you get? What paper do, uh, should you use? And my personal recommendations. And then I'm going to get into talking about the markers, what these markers have, what makes them so special, and then share with you a couple of alcohol markering techniques that I use for my illustrations. And then towards the end of the video, I'll share with you guys some budget options that will benefit you if you're on a budget and you can't buy alcohol-based markers because they are expensive. So now that we got that squared away, let's get to the video. So like I mentioned before, we're going to first talk about paper. The paper that I use is called Bristol Board and it's the Canson brand. It's super smooth and super strong and allows me to use markers and colored pencils at the same time with the right amount of texture on it. And since it's super smooth, I can blend markers easily like you see up here and down here and everywhere else in the drawing. And it has the right amount of texture for illustration paper. That way if I want to add some uh, colored pencils and touch up stuff in here, then I can do that just fine. That's why I like Bristol Board so much because I can do both, especially at the same time and it just makes everything easier on me but that's just my personal preference there is paper out there called expressive blending card which is essential if you want to use uh, copic markers in the long term I do use copic markers but I already mentioned the stuff about the Bristol board with expressive blending card it's perfect paper if you want to use some copic markers but the only problem with me is it's so smooth it doesn't take colored pencil well or at least I'm not sure how to use it with colored pencil yet. But it, it'd be the perfect paper to blend with your Copic markers, but I personally don't like it because it's way too smooth. Um, nothing's wrong with that. It's just, to my personal preference, I want to use colored pencil on it in case the blending isn't well. And I like to have that opportunity in case something goes wrong with the blending or whatever. So that's why I personally don't use a expressive blending card. But I do use cardstock. It's uh, actually not name brand. It's actually like pen gear cardstock. I only use it to ink my drawings. So if I want to go and color it, I can just print it out on my uh, on my illustration paper and like go from there. But yeah, my go-to paper is Bristol Board. Strathmore is a good brand too. Uh, Canton is my like number one brand, but yeah now that we got that squared away Let's go and talk about the markers themselves. Okay, so here are the markers that I have here I have a Copic sketch marker. This is actually an off-brand marker that I found on Amazon So if you see a dark eagle marker, then it's just not a name brand and then a Prismacolor marker So to get something straight alcohol markers do come in all different shapes and sizes So this one actually has a circle barrel and the Copic sketch actually has an oval barrel so markers may have a feature that keeps them from either rolling off your desk like uh, the Prisma colors here they have little hooks here on the caps that keep it from rolling away in case you have an inclined desk. The Copic sketch markers are actually oval shaped so it keeps it from rolling so it can also slide but it doesn't usually do that but yeah it's actually oval shaped so you don't have to worry about anything about rolling or whatever. And then some markers are also square shaped so I mean it might roll sometimes but you know it usually doesn't but if a marker is like a circle shape like say if a marker has a circle shape to it and it doesn't have these hooks like the prisma color has it will definitely roll like the copic chows they have little hooks on them too but the hooks kind of help depending on how sturdy they are but like i said every alcohol marker is going to be different and then here's another feature that you might notice alcohol markers do have a brush tip like the copic markers almost every copic marker has a brush tip but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend all video talking about Copic markers because I made a whole video discussing about Copic markers and their features and how to blend and all that stuff. If you want to go check that out, link will be right here in the card if you want to go and learn everything you want to know about Copic markers. This video is specifically about alcohol-based markers, so I mean Copic is included with it, but I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about that. Anyway, the Prism colors actually do have a chisel tip too. And the Copic have a chisel tip. And to get something straight, a lot of alcohol markers will have a chisel tip. I believe markers that do not have a chisel tip are really hard to find. But markers do come with a uh, fine tip too, like a lot of cheap markers do. But Prism colors are not cheap because they're kind of name brand. So here's a, a bullet tip and a chisel tip. These are the kind of tips you would find on a lot of cheap markers. Because a lot of cheap markers don't have brush tips. But um, 
In my opinion, I think brush tips are like more expensive to make. That's why a lot of brush tip markers are a lot more expensive. For example, Copic markers, because Copic markers go from seven to $10 per marker. And a lot of Copic markers that you can find like in your local art store would uh, have brush tips, like the Copic Sketch or the Copic Chows. The Copic Chows also have brush tips too, but they're a little bit uh, less expensive than uh, Copic Sketch markers. And here's another feature that a lot of people may not like, is that the fact that alcohol markers have the a little sticker on them. Like people kind of do find that annoying because the sticker kind of fades out and makes the marker look old. This marker is about, I think, two years old. So it kind of looks old, but it really isn't. But that's something a lot of people don't like because a lot of other markers, they have the text on the uh, cap. There's like a name and a code and then the color name. But yeah, if you do ever find an alcohol-based marker anywhere in the world, these are the kind of tips you would find on it. A brush tip, a uh, most commonly found chisel tip, and a bullet tip. Here's something else really cool about alcohol-based markers. Like if you're working with like a limited color selection, like say you have a selection of red, yellow, like every color out of each hue in the color spectrum, You'll have like, you might have like a yellow and like a blue, but you don't have a green. Let's see how you can do that. So you can take a yellow and swatch it on the paper. And then take like a pale blue. And you can make it like a green. Like you can do that with a lot of colors if you have like a limited color selection of markers. And it's not really hard to get there. So I'm going to take a red and I'm, and I'm going to try to make a purple. So I have a swatch of red on the paper and then swatch of blue and you can see I'm getting a little bit of purple in there. So yeah, like un unlike water-based markers, you can get different colors by just swatching two markers together and just like making your own color palette. And speaking of palette, you can have like a marker palette and you can mix your own custom colors in it, which I personally don't do. That's why I have lots of different brands of markers just for the colors. And something else that's really cool is you can also use uh, markers to help blend. If you've seen how Copic markers work, you would know that these all have the same inks, so they're just different colors. You can also use these inks to blend into each other and make super cool effects. So I'm going to show you guys how to blend a skin tone shade together using the using three different markers. If you're using Copic markers, I'm using E11, E13, and E15. Whatever area that I'm coloring, I like to go over with the base color and sort of get that area in. And honestly, you don't even have to use the uh, brush tip for it. If you have a chisel tip, then you can use that. Just so when I'm blending, it makes it easy for me when I'm trying to blend. So um, when I'm using these other markers, they have a wet layer to work on top of, making it easier for them to blend into each other. So I'm gonna take my mid-tone, which is E13. And then I'm going to go back with my base color and blend those two together. And then I'm going to use my darkest shade, which is E15, and kind of darken it all. And then just blend those back together. And then I'm going to go back with my base color and sort of repeat the same process that I did over. And see, so you're getting a really good blend out of those three markers. Which is something that's really cool about alcohol-based markers. Regardless if they're Copic or not, you can still blend whatever the brand is. I honestly use a bunch of different brands of markers just to blend too. Like say, I have a marker that I bought from Michaels. It's like an Artist Loft marker. But the Copic purples that I have are kind of hard to blend. So that's why I have this as an in-between shade to blend. If you want to learn more about blending with Copic markers, I have a whole playlist full of Copic blending tutorials. And I show you guys how I blend with my Copic markers, how I go about certain effects, and share some techniques that I use for my illustrations. Link will be right here in the card and in the description if you want to go and check that out. Another technique that I like to use is called layering. What is that? The way I like looking at it is if when you're stacking layers on top of a cake, that's sort of layering, but it's the same concept. How does that tie into this? Well, when you're shading in some marker ink and it's not as dark as you want, you can go in with another layer of marker after that dries and kind of make that ink darker. It's something really useful and very beneficial when I'm making my illustrations. So let me show you how to do it. So to blend, I'm gonna use the R20s and the R30s. I'm gonna use R27 as the base color. And as an in-between color, I'm gonna use R29 and R37. Then as the darkest color, I'm gonna use R39. And this is the marker we're going to use for layering. So let me get started. This will be the shape that we're going to blend and the shade they're going to be over here. So now that this thing is completely colored, I'm going to give this time to dry. And then when I come back, we can add more layers of this marker, this darkest shade of this marker. And I can show you guys how to layer. Five minutes later. So I'm going to take the darkest shade, which is R39. 
And we're just gonna go over the shaded parts and try to make this a little bit darker. And see, it's getting a little bit darker. But if you want, you can go in with like a darker color. Let me take R59. Am I adding this darker color? You can go in with uh, your other color, which is R39. This is R59. And you just make this a little bit darker. And same goes with any other darker shade that you want to add. But in this case, we're just going to try to go in a little bit darker in case layering doesn't work. And see, now, now it's darker than it was. So now if you want to, you can go back and try to get that seamless blend. So if your ink dries and you try to add that same darker shade, you can go in with like an even darker color and try to blend that over. So that's basically how I layer. So let's talk about some cheap alcohol marker brands that I personally will recommend to beginners and ones that can help you get that first hands-on experience using alcohol-based markers. The first one will be the Copic Child Markers. They're not too different from Copic markers. They have a limited color selection, they're a bit smaller, and they hold a bit less ink inside than Copic Sketch Markers do. So they are a bit of a cheaper option. They're cheaper than Prismacolors, $2 less than Copic Sketch Markers overall. Here's a Copic Child set. I have set D. I got this for $100 on Amazon. That's why I think they're a bit less expensive than Copic Sketch Markers. They also have brush tips, so they're not all different but from Copic Markers overall. Next up will be the Ahuhu brush markers. The Ahuhu markers work just as well as Copic markers and all the other brands that I listed before. And the fact that they're cheap markers and they have brush tips makes them more popular by everybody and it makes artists everywhere more prone to buy a whole lot of them. And here's something that I discovered in like the past year. Sharpies are alcohol based. I did not know that. The only difference between Sharpies and the brands that I listed before is that Sharpies are not dual ended. Sharpies do come in a big variety of colors. For one, the colors aren't really labeled on the marker there's no labeling system to it it's just a flat out color most sharpie markers only have a fine tip and like that's about it there's no other end for a chisel tip for some reason i don't know but they are really popular and they are alcohol based and it makes them really cool, I guess. Next up will be the Wish.com markers. Both the brand of marker and the color selection will vary depending on whatever Wish wants to send you. And I tried them in a video to see if they live up to my expectations of, in terms of being alcohol-based markers. Never doing that again. But if you want to check out my opinions on that, link will be right here in the card if you want to go and check that out. And last will be the alcohol markers you will get if you shop at Five Below. Five Below does sell a variety of alcohol-based markers, but they vary in size color selection and you know brand wise for some reason if that makes sense but for people who don't want to invest in too much money as for getting cheap markers then five below is your best bet and i think you can spend like probably either twenty dollars or less on every five below marker that there is i also made a video discussing five below markers their qualities and testing them out in an illustration link will be right here if you want to go check that out too but yeah, even though these markers aren't as good as Copic markers where you can refill them, they have brush tips, and they're high quality, you can't expect too much out of that if you get cheap markers because, you know, they're cheap. They may not have the best quality, they may not have the best colors, so just keep that in mind if you do plan on investing in cheap markers. So that's my video on how to use alcohol-based markers. Let me know what you guys thought of it. If you did like the video, give it a like and a comment. If you're new to my channel, I do lots of how to draw videos, illustration tutorials, art challenges, and more. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I